just before sunrise. Uh, today we're harvesting. Um, we're gonna do about a half a ton of mussels, just a little harvest today. They leave the city far behind. Matt Moretti and his crew head out to their crops in the Casco Bay, just off the coast of Port May. We harvest year round, um, and we're going about twice a week right now. But instead of using a tractor on this three acre farm, they'll use their hands, slowly easing up ropes that dangle high above the ocean floor. The mussels are suspended off the bottom, so there's a bunch of predators on the bottom, like crabs and starfish, lobsters, that love to eat mussels. These are Bangs Island mussels. Bangs Island mussels are, um, it's our brand of farm-raised mussels that we grow here in Casco Bay. They are started in the wild and finished by us. While these farm-raised mussels are similar to those caught in the wild, there are differences. There is practically no grit or pearls in the mussels, which you do find in wild mussels um, sometimes, but a lot more meat uh, per mussel, so the, the meat inside the shell is gonna be bigger. Uh, I think it's gonna be sweeter and have a better flavor. Um, they are known pretty much throughout the nation um, as really high quality, excellent mussel. Farming seafood in a controlled setting as opposed to harvesting the catch from the sea is known as agua culture. The practice accounts for roughly half of the seafood production around the globe. China is by far the planet's largest producer. So here's the reality. Wild fish catches are stagnant across the globe and the world's growing population is eating more and more seafood. The result, the gap will likely need to be filled with farm raised options. For Vinlendra Shura, director of the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization's North American Liaison Office, it's simply a matter of economics. With the increase in demand, as it, it, it is going to go up with rising income and changing food habits, it's obviously that there will be a lot of pressure on increasing uh, fish production. With the marine side, with the wild catch stabilizing and not rising, the onus would come on to the aquaculture sector to really uh, pick up the, the gap which is there. While there seems to be little difference between the two in taste and nutrition, questions remain about what's better for the environment, wild caught or farm raised. What's not up for debate, however, is that there's a clear need for both. The only way we're gonna have a sustainable uh, seafood in industry in the United States is by the addition of aquaculture. It will never happen again by all wild stocks. We will always rely on other countries to produce our seafood if we don't produce it ourselves. Former commercial fishing lobsterman Gary Moretti now co-owns Bangs Island Mussels with his son Matthew. Gary says because the world's fish stocks are strained, the production of farm-raised seafood, like his mussels, will only increase. This is a possibility of growing the highest level protein with the least impact to the environment. And we don't have a choice anymore. As the global population grows, so too will our need for food. But as production expands, will there be enough? Yes, we produce enough for the world to be fed. But are we able to feed the world using this production? No. If we were able to tackle the problem of access, both physical and financial, if we were able to tackle the problem of food waste. The natural growth in food production would be able to take care. But knowing very well that these problems are going to exist and not go away or not become zero overnight, we anticipate that we will be requiring nearly 50% more production for the population of 10 billion that we foresee in 2050. But could there be an untapped food source? Many believe the answer is crawling right in front of us. From crickets to black ants and even larvae, billions of people around the world eat insects on a daily basis. And in so doing, they're helping to sustain our planet. 
Insects are rich in protein. They consume minimal resources, and therefore they can prove to be a very good source of uh, food. In, in many places, they are already being used traditionally as, as food. A lot of science and a lot of work is going on in ensuring uh, how best we can farm insects to ensure uh, cheap and uh, very important, less resource intensive uh, means of providing nutrition. U.S. veterinarian Amy Franklin is well aware of the benefits of raising insects instead of traditional livestock, like cattle. She and her husband started a small-scale edible insect farming program in the Democratic Republic of Congo after adopting two children from this Central African country. When we first brought them home, they were so small for their age, they weren't on U.S. growth charts. But with good nutrition, in the first year, our son grew seven inches and our daughter grew five inches. And they're just so happy, thriving, and full of so much potential. And that's really what inspired me to start Farms for Orphans to help other children around the world get the nutrients they need to survive and even thrive. Then put in the back as well. We're training orphanages how to farm palm weevil larvae. And the larvae are actually a really popular food source throughout the Congo Basin, but they're typically wild harvested and available only seasonally. Working in the Congo, I quickly found out any orphanage in a large African city does not own any land. So there's no opportunity for them to grow a garden or to raise small livestock. And insect farming really is the only option for our orphanage partners to grow food and to have an income source through agriculture. Last September, when I was in the Congo, we were visiting with one of our orphanage partners and they were really excited because on that particular day, they were preparing a meal that included protein. The kids that we work with typically receive protein maybe twice a week. And on this particular day, they were preparing fish and rice. And they had five small fish that they had to split between 60 children. So whenever they do receive protein in their diet, it's not nearly enough. And my hope is that with the palm weevil farms, that they will be able to grow enough protein and micronutrients to provide at least three meals a week um, with the palm weevil larva. It's a cheap and easy way for our orphanage partners to grow their own protein. It doesn't require land and it requires vastly fewer resources like feed and water to produce the same amount of protein as traditional livestock. Mealworms are actually not worms. Um, they're larvae of a beetle. Wendy Lou Miguel is the CEO and founder of an edible insect farm called Rocky Mountain Micro Ranch. I founded Rocky Mountain Micro Ranch, I guess in the simplest terms, because I'm really interested in how we can feed people better, both in terms of nutrition, um, sometimes just access to calories, which is how I think of food security, and then also how we can do this in the face of having more people um, and less natural resources to feed ourselves. We are primarily still farming in a very manual way. Everything is mostly done by hand or with tools where we're sifting out the mealworms um, from their substrate and then um, using a, diff a different kind of fans to blow off the, the castings and collect those as a byproduct. Kyle Conrad is an entomologist who works at Wendy's Insect Farm. 
This job was a marriage of that passion of insects for a new passion I grew in when I was in Tanzania in the Peace Corps of food security. And bugs can address that issue in a lot of ways. They're much more sustainable to produce, very healthy for you and different things. So it was really cool to be able to find a job where I could actually make bugs. <laughs> Most of the jobs for entomologists is to kill bugs or learn how to kill bugs better. So I was really excited to find a job where no, your job is to make as many bugs as possible. And then those bugs are gonna go towards something great, feeding people in a sustainable way. We um, must explore and make successful these alternative types of agriculture, like insect farming, if we uh, have hopes to survive as a species. That sounds really dramatic and dire, but I, I think it's fairly accurate. It's a universal challenge that requires the help of every nation. Produce enough food for the world's growing population and do it sustainably. While it may require an overhaul, overcoming these challenges might be the only way to secure our future.